Hi, everyone. We're going to read another book on Epic today. I'm Miss Comia. Mrs. Peek. Dr. Jenkins. Miss Angles. And last week we read a story called Mooncakes that was about the Chinese Moon Festival in recognition of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And so this week we're reading a book celebrating um, Latinx heritage. And this is Esquivel, Space Age Sound Artist by Susan Wood. Okay, boys and girls, as Ms. Peek said, we're reading a book called Esquivel. Now, Juan Garcia Esquivel loved music. Defying convention, he created music that made people laugh and planted images in their minds. So at this point, we're gonna start with Ms. Ingalls. Let's read Esquivel. When Juan Garcia Esquivel was a small boy, he lived with his family in Tampico, Mexico, where whirling mariachi bands let out joyful yells as they stomped and strummed. Renty Tin Tin. By age six, Juan was curious about music. There was a piano at Juan's house, but it was a player piano. A paper roll told it which keys to play. Clever Juan had an idea. He disabled the paper roll and turned his parents' jangly piano into one he could practice on. He played it day and night. By age 10, Juan was captivated by music. He loved to play piano anytime, anywhere. Sometimes he'd disappear from home in search of an audience, and his family would have to go looking for him. They always found him in front of a piano. When Juan's family moved to Mexico City, the country's bustling capital, Juan found work playing piano at Mexico's first 24-hour radio station. He performed for 15 minutes each day and was paid two pesos a show, enough to buy a sandwich and a taxi ride home. He was just 14 years old. Juan started learning all he could on his own, no music teachers, lessons, or schools. Without traditional training in how musical notes went together, Juan focused instead on how the sounds could be arranged. Finally, Juan felt ready to create his own music. So when at age 17, he was offered the job of orchestra leader for a popular comedy show at the radio station, Juan gladly took it. When the radio comedian needed music for a skit about, say, a stout man walking his tiny poodle down a busy city street, Juan had to imagine what that might sound like. Juan might ask the kettle drums to boom, 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 like a lumbering giant. He might ask the clarinets and oboes to yip and yap like a dainty dog. He might tell the trumpets and trombones to honk, blap, bleep like blaring car horns. Juan tested and mixed and blended and arranged all sorts of sounds to match the imaginary situation. He was an artist using dips and dabs of color to create a vivid landscape. But instead of paint, Juan used sound. Weird and wild sounds, strange and exciting sounds. Juan started experimenting with popular Mexican tunes. He tinkered with tempos, slowing songs down, then revving them up. He fiddled with dynamics, swapping soothing soft sounds and startling loud sounds. He twisted chords and combined instruments to sound thrilling, dreamy, and often funny because Juan liked music that made people laugh. But underneath the humor, it took great musical skill to play Juan's challenging new music. Nobody had ever heard music like Juan's. Soon he was winning awards. His songs were turned into records that people could buy in stores. Juan's innovative music could be heard on radios and record players all across Mexico. An important record company in the United States 
heard about Juan and his unusual music. Would he come make records in America? Yes, yes, yes. Easy, easy, easy. Juan packed two suits. He bought a big red convertible sports car with a white top. Then he drove all the way to New York City. Vroom! There, Juan found a music shop the size of a department store with three entire floors full of strange and exotic in instruments. Bumpa Buddha, Dumpa Bum. He saw boobums, bamboo tubes that could play a tune, a spooky sounding electrical instrument called a theremin, a bazimba, a kazoo sounding contraption played with a mallet, an Andion line, Andion line, an organ with a swaying keyboard, nina, nina, and even a giant gong, bong. So many odd new sounds to play with. Juan was in heaven. The late 1950s and early 1960s was a great time to be recording music. Scientists had discovered a new process called stereophon stereophonics, or stereo for short. It separated sounds so when you listen to a recording, music could seem to come from the left side, the right side, or both sides at once. For sound artist Juan, stereo was yet another exciting color for his musical palette. Stereo, the sound your eyes can follow. To make a good stereo recording, instruments needed to be kept apart while they were recorded. That way, the brap of the horns wouldn't get mixed in with the weedy wee of the flutes. Most conductors used curtains, screens, or special booths to separate the instruments. That wasn't enough for Juan. Once he put half his orchestra in the recording in one recording studio and the other half in another recording studio on the other side of the building. So far, it felt like they were an entire city block away. The musicians wore earphones so they could hear what they were playing. And so that everyone could see him, Juan conducted on closed circuit TV, television only the musicians could view. Juan had one more sonic trick up his sleeve. He brought in singers. The singers didn't sing words, they sang sounds. They sang zoo, 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 and do, and pow, pa, ba, 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 woo, woo. So Juan, Juan's quickly versions of popular sounds, songs, he replaced the lyrics everyone knew with the singer's fun, flashy sounds. Lu, 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 ra, ra, ri. People loved Juan's colorful music. It took them to other worlds, other planets. It sounded like a crazy rocket ride zigzagging through outer space. When Juan wasn't making his unique music, he enjoyed many things. He liked beautiful art, fancy cars, and elegant clothes. He especially liked pretty women but Juan loved music most. Juan made many records and played hundreds of concerts with his orchestra. In Las Vegas, Juan and his musicians performed at the Stardust Hotel for 14 years in a row. Fans from near and far, including famous singers, actors, and actresses, would come to hear his out of this world sounds. Juan also made music for dozens of movies and telev television programs even a TV show, especially for children. Clap, clap, clap. Bravo, encore! Now, Juan wasn't called Juan anymore. He'd explored sonic frontiers, expanded musical possibilities, and enhanced the way people think about, listen to, and enjoy music. Now, Juan was the space age sound artist, simply known as Esquivel, with an exclamation point. And <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful story, boys and girls. Did you enjoy that? We hope you have a lot of fun. <laughs> next time. Bye. Bye.